Hi, this is Asya Now and you're watching The Weekly Wrap. First up, several states in Malaysia were flooded with cities and rural areas inundated with water. Evacuation centres have opened with thousands taking shelter there until waters subside. Ten states were affected including the city capital Kuala Lumpur. The first areas affected included Kelantan, Pahang and Terengganu. The same states were hit again in the second wave of floods along with Johor, Perak, Melaka and Selangor. Based on the Malaysian Met Department's forecast, the second wave of floods is expected to last until March. Next, good news for Singapore's die-hard chilli crab fans. Restaurant chain House of Seafood launched its ready-to-eat crab vending machines at one of its outlets on Tuesday where diners can order crab on the go. The crabs are prepared in three flavours, chilli, black pepper and salted egg yolk. Once an order is placed, the crabs are dispensed in piping hot, vacuum-sealed plastic boxes within five and a half minutes. A box of crab weighs about one kilogram and costs 60 Singapore dollars, which is the same as dine-in prices. Back to Malaysia, things went from bad to worse for a group of gamblers when they ended up in a crocodile-infested river after attempting to flee the police during a raid. Sarawak police ended up rescuing all seven gamblers with their boat from the fast-flowing Baku River on Thursday. Police said they were lucky to have survived. However, no one got away scot-free as they will be charged with illegal gambling. In our next story, three Indonesian students died during a university freshman orientation program in Yogyakarta. They died after allegedly falling victim to hazing by members of the university's climbing club. Another 10 students were hospitalised. The Mapala Unisi Climbing Club Freshman Orientation Program was carried out on the slopes of Mount Lawu in central Java earlier this month. The club has since been suspended. Lastly, some Miss Universe contestants suffered fainting spells due to the hot weather in the Philippines. The Philippines Tourism Secretary Wanda Tio said some of the pageant candidates came from cold climates and weren't accustomed to the hot weather in the country. Two contestants had fainted while another two had to be ushered away from events when taken ill in the island republic. She added that apart from adjusting to the weather, the contestants were also coping with jet lag. We now head over to Bangkok with our Thailand partner Nation TV for the latest roundup from the northern ASEAN region. Thank you Kuala Lumpur. Here are the updates from mainland Southeast Asia. Well, Thailand is doing better this year according to the International Corruption Index. Thailand has dropped in an international corruption ranking from 76th in 2015 to 101st among the 176 countries assessed in 2016 by independent watchdog Transparency International. The watchdog attributed the drop to repression by the military government tightened by junta rule, lack of independent oversight and deteriorating rights and a ban on politicians. Thailand's rank in the list fell from 76th out of 168 countries assessed in 2015 to 101st out of 176 countries in 2016, equal with Gabon, Niger, Peru, the Philippines, East Timor, and Trinidad and Tobago. In Asia-Pacific, Thailand and Cambodia both fell in the rankings. Myanmar to propose a new electronic toll collection system. Myanmar may introduce an electronic toll collection system to make collecting toll on the highways more efficient. The Ministry of Construction has announced for companies to send in their proposals for a proposed electronic toll collection system. This is intended for use along the famous Yangon Mandalay highways. Cars can pass through toll booths automatically with a new system as the machine will deduct toll fee. Only registered cars are allowed to pass through the toll booths. Ho Chi Minh City launches the new application for mobile phones to relieve traffic. Vietnam's Ho Chi Minh City has launched a mobile application to help motorists with traffic congestion. The newly launched mobile application will give smartphone and tablet users access to traffic updates across the city. It can warn users of congestion and construction so that motorists can avoid congested routes. Data will come from 300 cameras that are installed around the city. Prison inspection in Myanmar planned for correctional reforms. 
A Myanmar Parliamentary Commission on Legal Affairs will soon inspect insane prison in Yangon as part of the country's reforms on correctional issues. An MP who is a commission member said that an inspection would lead to an improvement to enable the prisons to also serve as rehabilitation centers. A UN Special Rapporteur Yang He Lee on the situation of human rights in Myanmar mentioned the prison in her remarks following a 12-day visit to Myanmar on January 20. Insane prison in Yangon is notorious for its inhumane conditions, corruption, abuse of inmates and employment of mental and physical torture. Let's take a look at this outreach project for youth in Cambodia which still flourishes. This is the Coconut School. It's in Cambodia and it's still serving its purpose to outreach to underprivileged children. In January 2013, the school opened its doors to children living on a small island who otherwise had to travel across the Mekong River to the city for their education. The school does not replace the state school they are still required to attend, but supplements their learning, particularly at the weekend. With the help of seven volunteer teachers, project owner Uk Van Day offers three subjects, English, computer studies, and recycling. The letter is pretty much interesting, and it is what set Coconut School apart from normal schools and guides the mantra of its founder. And that's it for the updates from Upper ASEAN region. This has been me, Patsurang Desha Putarangsi. Back to you, KL. Thank you, Bangkok, and wishing all of you Gong Si Fat Chai, Jin Yen Kwai Le. I'm Dina Murat. Have a good day.